Liz Lamping here, PHRA's Executive Director. Welcome to P4, People, Purpose, Passion, Pittsburgh. P4 is brought to you by our members and sponsors, Latitude and the University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education. We appreciate their support and we will hear from them throughout the podcast, beginning with the University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education. My name is Dylan Jenkins, uh, and today I'm going to be our guest host for our P4 series, People, Purpose, Passion, and we're going to be interviewing a few of our PHRA Board of Director uh, members here. Uh, today I have with me Vince Consoli, uh, as well as Aaron Vial, uh, and we're going to be asking them a couple uh, professional and personal questions, get to know them a little bit more uh, from our member opinion survey. A lot of us were interested in learning more about the members that we have on the board. Uh, so with that, I wish both of you a good morning. How are your mornings starting off so far? Good morning, Dylan. Doing great. Good morning, Dylan. It's a good, it's a good day. Any day you wake up is a good day, you know. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, um, Aaron, I'm going to start with you. The first question I have on here is tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, whether that you want to start with the the personal side uh, and segue that into the professional side. But the professional side, I'm going to be interested to learn, you know, what is your role? I know you work at UPMC. So what do you do there exactly? Uh, but if you want to give the members a little bit of back, a little bit of background about yourself, uh, I'll let you take it. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Aaron Vialli. I've worked in HR about 15 years, um, but I am, I think, a little bit unusual um, from some other HR members because I had a foray into healthcare operations. I always worked in HR in healthcare. And at one point, a, a leader said, you know, would you be interested in going down the administrative path? And I said, yes. Um, and I worked in healthcare administration through the uh, COVID pandemic, you know, and really just saw there were, no, you know, no one was able to work. We had to quarantine people all the time. It was very difficult and stressful. So it kind of helped me identify a passion for offering that support. I kind of came back to HR from operations with the hope to be the HR, the talent acquisition support that I wish I had had. So um, came back over to the talent acquisition side after the pandemic. So I'm currently the de director of talent acquisition for the UPMC Insurance Services Division. So we have about 7,500 employees at the UPMC Health Plan. Um, so my team hires, you know, all the openings. We look for nurses, actuaries, kind of all those insurance-related positions. Um, additionally, I wear another hat at UPMC, and I'm the director of something called Pathways to Work, where we do... Um, community outreach. We offer career readiness support, and it's very rewarding. We work with um, community partners all through the Pittsburgh area. So those are my two hats I wear at UPMC. Vince, I'll kick it over to you. Well, thanks, Aaron. That was very nice. Well, I'm uh, Vince Consoli. I'm the husband of 41 years, my lovely wife, and who thinks uh, most people think she's crazy to stay with me for 41 years, but that's the way it goes. I'm a father of three adult children, uh, I love family and friends. I'm a follower of Christ. I can't sit still for an old fat guy. I got a lot of energy. Uh, I love a good cigar. It's about the only time I can relax. As for work, I'm the chief operating officer of Promark. It's a 56-year-old human capital management company. We help companies with their people at all levels of the talent life cycle. You know, I've been in operations and HR management for over 42 years now, the last 20 in executive roles. I have a business degree from Slippery Rock, uh, not exactly the place where you get a business degree from, but a lot of good experience. Uh, and I always knew that whatever I did for work would have to involve people. Uh, recently, uh, we, um, our company has owned a license for Disrupt HR Pittsburgh, and I'm an organizer and speaker. Um, and I'll throw a shout out out there. April 24th in 2024 is our next event. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for, yeah, the little bit of background there. Uh, and, and Vince, I'm actually going to stay with you for, for a moment. Uh, okay. Being the COO there at Promark, was that something you wanted to do or, or knew you wanted to do growing up? Or or what were what were some of the goals or, or aspirations if it wasn't uh, the current position? Well, like I said, I, I always knew whatever I did, it would involve people. And no, I did not sit down as a as a, a grade schooler and say, oh, I want to be the COO of a human capital management company. That wasn't even in there. Actually, I started my career uh, in uh, operations management at LTV Steel. I, you know, back when I was growing up, uh, the steel industry was still very big in Pittsburgh. And that's kind of where most people figured they would end up somewhere. And that's kind of what I thought I would do. And then through some uh, strange situations at LTV Steel, uh, they needed some help in recruiting and training for the first time in years. And um, they picked me because I was the only guy uh, in the in the uh, general supervisor ranks with a college degree. It turns out I was really good at it. And then that started my HR career for uh, you know years ago, many years ago. Wow. Yeah. It's funny you say that too about the steel industry. There was uh, an article that I read over the weekend. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but uh, Pittsburgh actually used to be known for its glass block windows. If you've ever been downtown and you've seen the glass block windows, yeah, we're like the second or third city right behind Chicago uh, that used to produce those. So uh, I thought that was interesting. But uh, Aaron, I'm going to come back over to you because I want to ask, what are some of the top HR trends that you're seeing or that are impacting your business or or clients that you work with currently or your team? You know, I think anybody in um, in talent acquisition would say the labor market that we've experienced over the past three or four years is unlike anything, you know, we had seen previously. So just kind of predicting which way it's going to go, um, you know, in 2020, money was free, right? Interest rates were the lowest they had been. And to get out of the COVID pandemic, the government printed $7 trillion. One in $3 currently in circulation has been printed since 2021, since the pandemic. So, you know, that created this kind of like upward spiral of just job creation and hiring, you know, that we're now kind of seeing the downfall of. But I think what strikes me in talent acquisition is how we still, for our key job families, we still have shortages. You know what I mean? That well, you know, I think if you ask anyone like, oh, what's the labor market trend of 2024, they would say layoffs. That's every that's every headline that you see is every, you know, company is laying off. But for those of us kind of in the ditches, there are still, um, you know, just a lot of job families that are in high need. So, you know, I think that's what really strikes me. And Vince, you said something that kind of resonated with me that you said you didn't sit in grade school saying, I want to be the COO of a human capital management firm, right? Like, mm. to me, that's, you know, another trend that I'm seeing is this disconnect between what students are hearing in schools about where job opportunities are and where job opportunities actually are. So that's something I'm kind of personally passionate about is helping to bridge those gaps and saying, hey, make sure you're making good decisions with your studies because you've got to get a good idea of where the jobs are out there. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I I was uh, fortunate enough, Vince, similar to you, I actually have a, a marketing or business degree from Slippery Rock, not the place you get a degree like that, more more on the sports science uh, field, but uh, but nonetheless... Uh, I was invited back to speak to a chapter that they have there, a student chapter for the PHRA, and it was interesting to hear uh, exactly that point, Aaron, you know, what uh, they're being taught and, and the folks I met with, the kids that I met with, uh, I told pretty much all of them, you are so far ahead of where I was at when I was in your shoes. So uh, it was an honor to to have spoken to those uh, the kids there. And you made a comment too, interest rates. It's funny, my, my dad and I were actually talking a couple weekends ago and, um, you know, I was like, yeah, a couple of my friends, you know, my wife and I were fortunate enough to get a house uh, at a very low interest rate, sub three interest rate. And a couple of our friends, family friends are getting houses now and they're around 7%, maybe a little lower than that now. But my dad was like, man, you, you guys are, are, you know, complaining about these, these high air quotes on high interest rates. Interest rates were like 16%. When I was looking for houses and stuff. So, um, yeah, you're 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 not wrong. Uh, so, Vince, I actually want to kick that question over to you because you and I partner a little bit. And I and, and I think one of the materials that you've sent me in the past is so impactful. 
and it has such a large impact or net for uh, HR professionals. And it is that placemat where you have them circle things uh, yeah. on there. So so I want to kick it over to you and, and hear what kind of HR trends you're seeing or, or maybe your clients are coming back to you saying, hey, Vince, we have an interest in learning more about this. Yeah, a couple of big things we've been working on with our clients uh, have to do with, well, for, as Aaron said, people. Uh, and basically succession planning, which, you know, used to be a good thing to do because people after 30 years would retire. Now that's not the case. Uh, folks are leaving organizations in a year and six months and two years. And if you're not prepared with the next person to step up, you're in trouble. And the same thing uh, with the entire people experience. Uh, you know, before uh, we did an onboarding program, well, onboarding isn't good enough anymore. You know, you need a people experience. Uh, there has to be a reason for somebody to to want to come in and want to be excited about uh, what they're doing there. And and the truth is, how somebody comes into an organization, how they're treated while they're there, and even things like outplacement that we work on with our clients, how they leave an organization sets the tone. You know, I mean, I I, I know it sounds goofy, but we had a company who uh, laid off fifty people. 10% of their, their organization decided not to do anything about them or with them, just laid them off, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, just gone. Within two weeks, 15 other people left the company because they saw how those people were treated on the way out. So it's critically important to understand coming in when they're there and on the way out, you have to treat people differently. So we are working on people experience uh, in organizations. And and what is some of the things that we can do or or that our members can do uh, that could positively impact that inclusion so that uh, they're not having, you know, that attrition or, or Vince, as you just kind of went through there, uh, certain people being laid off and then others following them out the door? What are some ways uh, that we or you as HR professionals are speaking with not only your team, but maybe even your clients in, in how you can help? on that side of things. And Vince, I will, I'll stay with you or I could kick that over to Aaron, whoever's feeling. Well, I can answer. We can, I'm sure we can both answer those things, but yeah, I'll tell you right now, um, uh, coaching, mentoring, uh, listening, you know, pulse surveys sometimes, uh, you know, folks used to be so enthralled with exit interviews it's too late. Then talk to your people. It doesn't hurt to talk with them because if you try to manage in an ivory tower situation, you're going to get burned. You have to talk with your people and find out what's going on in their mind. What would cause them to leave? What what are they happy about and not happy about? Now, you may not be able to fix everything or, or meet every one of their uh, thoughts, but at least you can deal with them and let them know why that can't happen. But we can do this instead. Just to piggyback on that, uh, Vince, you know, I... I'm a big fan of talking very often about customer service and there's almost no one that I interact with that is not my customer, you know? So thinking when you kind of go into it with that customer service mindset um, of thinking, you know, what does the customer need for me? What does the customer want? And when the customer is your employees, your hiring managers, it kind of helps put that in perspective um, to really make sure that they're having the customer service experience that they deserve to have. And that can help you, that mindset can help you be a little bit more mindful about those tough conversations, the company you referenced, Vince, where they did layoffs and then failed to, right, deliver a customer experience, customer survey experience to the rest of those employees about should they be scared, should they be nervous? So, you know, that's a mindset that I really try to embrace. Very good. And and Aaron, I'll ask you then, how, how are you currently uh, implementing or strategizing to build trust with your team or people across your organizations? Are there any maybe innovative ideas that you could share or encourage the members listening with? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, building trust is all about active listening and empowering where you can. So I, I think that it's one of those things that looks a little bit different for everyone. So if I'm building trust with you, for example, you, you know, for some people, I trust someone who's on time and prepared for meetings. For other people, I trust someone who wants to know about me and my personal life. So it's that's kind of the tricky part about building those trusts and relationships is that it really requires a level of emotional intelligence where you are identifying what the other person in that relationship needs. And as a human resource function, you know, I think a lot of times people come to us with 
I hate to say anxiety, right? But they are on the hook to make something happen and they rely on human resources to make it happen. So it's my opinion that we owe them just the highest level of professionalism, of expertise so that they can make those deliverables. So I think that identifying those, you know, those asks of our customers from human resources is vitally important to our success. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, some of the things, you know, Vince, you made a comment a, a few moments ago uh, about exit interview, exit interviews being too late and that there needs to be something prior to that, uh, whether it be a mentorship role. There was a, a young lady that I met with after Disrupt HR, uh, the, the popular event that we usually host uh, in Octobers and then again uh, mid-year. But um, her and I met after the fact, uh, after her presentation regarding a mentorship program uh, that she has launched internally. Uh, it's a wealth management group, about 80 employees, and how successful it's been uh, in building that inclusion and trust across uh, their organization. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the time here, and I, and I do want to ask both of you one very important question. Uh, what value have you seen since joining the PHRA or, or being a PHRA member how is that um, helping you stay on that path towards success and your goal? And and Vince, I'm going to start with you uh, if you're ready for that. Yeah, I've been around uh, the PHRA for a long time, and I believe the biggest value is connection. Um, you know, all of us should have someone to bounce ideas off of. That's you know, someone with wisdom to bounce ideas off, someone with a vested interest in our future to encourage us and someone we can pour into. And you can get all three of those at the PHRA. Aaron, I'm going to kick that question over to you. Yeah, you know, I think the PHRA can be what you make of it. Uh, for me, you know, what I really love to see in the PHRA are people who are ambitious you know, um, if you're somebody who wants to have more influence at your company, if you're somebody who wants to grow and just make a bigger impact, part of that is being creative, coming up with new ideas, new suggestions. I don't know about you all as managers, but for me, I love the employee I have to say no to all the time, right? If they're like, hey, could we try this? What about this? Let's do this. That's the employee I love. The employee that stresses me out. I'm the one, who's, the one who I'm like, hey, do you have ideas over there? Like, what are you, are you awake? Like, what are you doing? So I think we should all kind of strive to be that employee who's like, hey, I have this idea. Like I've been observing the business. Like, what if we tried this? And I think I've had so many opportunities in the PHRA to say, hey, I, I'm thinking about suggestions a coaching program to my company. What is it? How do you become a certified coach, right? Like I'm thinking about a better, um, you know, employee resource group program. How do I do that? So the PHRA just gives you so many people you can reach out to with those questions. And in my experience, I think probably both of you will say the same thing. People don't just answer you. They are excited to answer you. These are the PHRA are people who love their work. And that excitement is so contagious. There have been several ideas that I kind of ask somebody just to say, oh, I'm just, this is in the back of my mind. I'm just thinking about it. And their energy and their enthusiasm helped me develop the idea into something more substantive. So I think access to other HR professionals and just the knowledge and resources that they have is so key. Um, but also just you know, it's it's a great place to learn and grow. I was fortunate through the PHRA to get involved in the Point Park Book, book Club that meets monthly, um, you know, and just that's something I personally love is reading and talking to other people who have, um, you know, read a book. So it's just a great idea sharing and it's not really related to work. They're just, we read fiction books, but it's just a great fulfilling personal experience. So kind of a long winded answer, I apology, but just to no. say there's many things the PHRA can do. Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling here because I, I I support that answer a thousand percent. Um, the question I get a lot, uh, being on the leader uh, or, or being the leader of the LPD committee, uh, the Learning Planning and Development Committee here uh, for the PHRA is how can I get involved? A lot of my committee members uh, and volunteers, they want to get further involved. And the best place I point at uh, is our event calendar on, on the PHRA website. And then I take time, one-on-one uh, -on -one time to go through that with them, with those members that are interested in getting more involved. Uh, I take 30 minutes, whether it's, you know, in-person coffee or virtual coffee or lunch or whatever the, the case may be. Uh, and I get an idea of what they're looking to do, what their schedule may allow. Uh, so they're not spreading themselves too thin, uh, setting expectations for them as, as a volunteer. Uh, but the best way is that, that they can get involved. Those being, in my opinion, the in-person events like the annual conference um, that we have coming up here. 
but I want to say thank you both so much for your time. Uh, it was such a pleasure uh, being a, a poor man's peach ram, uh, to quote Corey Amos, uh, another one of our guest hosts. Um, but I want to end with, if anyone listening has questions or would like to reach out to both uh, myself, Vince, or Aaron, I know that all three of us are very, very welcoming and uh, would love to connect Ooh. with you uh, to talk uh, about how you could get further involved if you are interested. Uh, but with that being said, I, I want to say thank you both again, uh, and I hope you have enjoyed this segment of our P4 series. Thanks so much, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. People do matter, and at the end of the day, we cannot get any work done if we don't have the right people in place. Are your people connected? Latitude is the one-stop shop people connection software platform. Our software workshops and programming facilitate new employee onboarding, manager 101s, stay interviews, mentorship programs, and peer networking to increase retention, engagement, satisfaction, productivity, profitability, and happiness. Imagine a technology that intersects your calendar with LinkedIn, Zoom, Google Docs, and your CRM. Contact Latitude today to schedule a conversation. The PHRA P4 podcast was created to help build HR readers through discussions with thought and business leaders on the most critical success factor of any business, its people. If you enjoy an episode, please help us spread the word by subscribing to the podcast and providing us a rating. We would love for you to take a screenshot of the episode, tag PHRA, and share it with your followers. Until next time, thank you for